Well, greetings, church family. Today's daily Bible reading had us in 2 Samuel chapters 19 and 20. In chapter 19, verses 1 through 7, we see Joab coldly rebuking his uncle David for the king, simply lamenting the death of his son Absalom. Now, certainly David's morose attitude would have affected the people, but a time of national lamenting for the civil war and Absalom's death would not have been inappropriate for them to go through at this time. And what makes this matter so cold indeed is that Joab's the one who killed his cousin. He killed Absalom. Chapter 19, verses 8 through 15, David is restored as king of Israel. Now, interestingly, the northern ten tribes, who we're going to see as we continue through the Old Testament, are going to be collectively referred to as Israel more and more. They're quicker to reinstall David as king than Judah was, even though David was from the tribe of Judah. And Benjamin is, is usually united with Judah at this time. Now, it seems as though Judah is considering following after uh, David's relative Amasa, that's the one who had been commanding the combined army of all Israel under Absalom. And so uh, David is very wise here. Rather than glad-handing and, and you know, uh, flattering and using deception like Absalom did to gain the favor of the people, like a politician, David uh, does the right thing. He calls upon Zadok and Abiathar, the priests, to go speak to Judah, help them remember David is the rightly anointed king and to bring some diplomacy to Judah. The promise is made by the king. If Judah comes back to him, he's going to make Amasa the commander of his army instead of Joab. And from what we know of Joab, we know what's going to happen next, right? Chapter 19, verses 16 through 43, large section here after the brief civil war. Many from Judah, as well as some from Benjamin, they joined David to escort him west across the Jordan, back to Jerusalem. Now, three individuals are focused on here, Shimei and Mephibosheth. Uh, both would be of the tribe of Benjamin and Barzillai of Gilead. Now, Shimei was the one who cursed David, if you'll remember, as he left Jerusalem in chapter 16, verses 5 through 14. He repents now. He seeks David's forgiveness. He admits his wrongdoing, seeks reconciliation reconciliation, and the king kindly forgives him. Despite his nephew Abishai, remember that's Joab's brother, wanting the man executed, both Abishai and Joab, bloodthirsty men. Mephibosheth finally gets to tell the king his side of the story that Ziba lied about to David back in chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, and David kindly restores land to the man, even when Mephibosheth says, that's okay, you can give it away, and the king welcomes this son of Jonathan back with open Arms. In fact, in chapter 21, verses 7 through 8, we'll read that David indeed spared Mephibosheth. Now, Barzillai the Gileadite from Rogalim, he was one of those men who treated David and his soldiers so well when they arrived in Mahanaim ahead of the civil war against Absalom's forces back in chapter 17, verse 27. And we see it actually referenced here in chapter 19, verse 32, that he was taking care of the king. And so David wants to return kindness for kindness. He wants to take care of Barzillai. So he invites him to go to Judah with the king. And Barzillai, in his older age, she's got a servant's heart. He doesn't want to be a burden on David, so he sends his own servant, Chimham, instead to receive David's kindnesses. And at the end of the chapter, we see kind of this interesting rivalry building between the ten northern tribes, collectively called Israel here, and the single tribe of Judah. Now, this is a preview of how the fractured kingdoms will be split up after the reign of Solomon. And we see that frequently as we go through the Old Testament, especially in the prophets. Uh, but notice here, Israel is pretending to be more faithful to David than Judah is. They're like, hey, we were, we were quicker than you guys were to, to say, let's make David our king once again. We, we've got ten parts in the king. We have a, a, a greater claim to him. And then immediately, what do we see in chapter 20, verses 1 through 12? Sheba, a Benjamite, a worthless fellow, so wicked that that's his description of his character. He tries and rallies the rest of Israel against David and Judah. And it works. So much for Israel having those ten parts in the king. Now David calls his new commander Amasa, gather Judah's troops, but Amasa takes longer than expected. So David sends Joab and Abishai, and Joab uses the opportunity to, of course, murder the man. I say, of course, because that's Joab's character. He is bloodthirsty, and he seeks to murder. It's very sad. In fact, Joab is so bloodthirsty that we see in the rest of chapter 20 here, he's fully prepared to cause whatever destruction is necessary to whomever to get to Sheba, who tried to hide in the city of Abel Beth Makkah. And it was only a wise woman from that city, invoking Yahweh's name and her counsel, who convinces Joab to stand down until they can hand Sheba's head over to the troops. A couple principles that we can get from these two chapters and we can meditate on and seek to apply to our own lives. 
Uh, first, David exemplified the principle of loving his neighbor and refusing to hate those who opposed him. Listen to Leviticus 19, verses 17 to 18. You shall not hate your fellow countrymen in your heart. You may surely reprove your neighbor, but shall not incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. Uh, now, by the time that Jesus incarnated as, as as a man, right, took on human flesh, by the time he's teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, by this time the, the Jewish leaders had added to God's word, right? You shall love your neighbor, and then they added, and hate your enemy. But clearly from what we just read in Leviticus 19, they were never, never commanded to hate their enemies. In fact, they were supposed to uh, seek to love them, never bear any grudge against them, never take vengeance, and David exemplified that. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 43 through 45, you've heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor, that is from the Old Testament, and hate your enemy, that is not from the Old Testament, never was God's instruction. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Certainly something that we can apply in our own lives. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you've turned from your sin, you've trusted in Christ as your Savior, then we should be fine when people heap abuse on us. We should be able to love them in response. And it's going to be hard. We need to go to the Lord. We have to ask for his help throughout this. But we should never repay evil with evil. Never. When we repay evil with good. Another principle here that we see, Joab continued to sow what? Murder in chapter 20. Over and over, he's just been sowing little seeds of murder, and he can expect to reap what he sows. He's going to reap death by bloodshed as a consequence for what he's been doing. Galatians 6, 7 through 8 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. The one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. What are you sowing in your life? Has the Holy Spirit regenerated you? Have you repentantly turned to Jesus Christ in faith so that now you are able to sow to the Lord? If so, if you're in Christ, then let us apply ourselves diligently in this matter. Let us seek to obey God, to bring him glory, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love our neighbor as ourselves, to evangelize the lost and exalt the Lord and edify one another in the church. Let us sow to the Spirit as a response to what the Lord has done for us. Well, this has been Second Samuel chapters 19 and 20, and I hope you have a great day.